Dave. So how is our day going? And I hope you can all hear me. You can use the reaction button to show that you can hear me. Hello, am I audible? Okay, thank you, if you are. Okay, so thank you, Zarifai. So today we're talking about procrastination and it's something that everybody does. Okay, I should share the link. All right, give me one. Okay. Let me share. There's no way to pin this thing here so that other people can see it and they join. But no problem. At the end of the session, I will share it again. Okay. So we'll be talking about procrastination, putting things off till the last minute. And even in some cases, we'll not end up doing the tax at all. So but before we get started, we have these four words here. We have procrastination and uh, procrastinating, delaying, waiting, and postponing. Can anyone tell me how these four words are different and how they are related? Are they similar or they have something like just share your thoughts on these four words? Anybody? Or should I call names? We are not much here. We are just about six. Yeah. So I can call out names. Um, Gadisa. So do you want to share? What are your thoughts on this forward? Okay, let me call another person, Philomsa. Nobody wants to talk. Why? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Right. It just feel like I'm speaking to myself. So, does anyone want to like share their opinion about this forward? How they are related? Are they similar or they are completely different? What do you think? I think for me, the background is not clear. The voice is not clear. Okay, the forward is not clear. What? I didn't get you very well. Mm -hmm. The voice, the voice, the background is not clear. The voice, voice, background is not clear for me. Okay, okay. Yeah, so let's get started. So, um, I'll share my opinion, and then if you want to share yours, you can just raise up your hand. For me, I believe these four words they are similar, but they are not the same in the sense that. When you postpone something, it's very different from you waiting or delaying. Those ones, we are very clear, clear on it. Postponing is like just putting something to a later time or like you schedule a meeting, then you postpone it to a later time. So that is that. Then waiting, just as it is, you wait on something. Then why, whereas delaying something is you are leaving that particular thing to do maybe a later time, which is very different from postponing because Delaying has a negative connotation to it, unlike postponing, which could be positive or negative. But most times, delaying has a negative connotation to it. Then, with procrastinating, that one incorporates both the four. You, when you are procrastinating, you can delay a tax. Maybe you can decide to wait to complete it till later, or you postpone it altogether. But why procrastination is different from this forward, from the other three, is because when you procrastinate, and procrastinating is quite similar to delaying, because most times when you procrastinate, it's usually out of fear. It's not just because maybe it's, there's always a reason attached to it. Then at the end of the day, you leave that task till later time. And while you're doing so, you understand clearly 
that you leaving that tax, not doing it at that particular time, has a negative consequence. But when you postpone something, it may not have a negative consequence. It could be for a good reason. You can decide to wait also for a good reason. Whereas delaying and procrastinating, they are quite similar. Then, so with that, let's go on to what procrastination is. So procrastination is the act of voluntarily delaying or postponing a tax, despite knowing there will likely be negative consequences for doing so. And when we are procrastinating, most times you are always maybe instead of doing what you're supposed to do, you end up doing another thing. And this could be out of fear or failure. It could be any other thing. There are a number of factors that let someone procrastinate. But one thing we should all understand is everyone procrastinates. I do. Everybody procrastinates. But that does not mean that we are procrastinators. Before you can call someone a procrastinator or before you can identify as a procrastinator, then it's something that you should have been doing over and over again, such that it's already drawing you back. So now we have to look at the importance. Why is it important we talk about procrastination? Why should we deal with it? Why should we even be concerned about it? The first thing is that it decreases productivity because when we delay tax and we leave it to a later time, then at the end of the day, we find out that it will just continue to bombard, bombard. And as the deadline comes close, as the deadline approaches, you will be over, you'll be feeling overwhelmed and you may not even put in the best in completing that task anymore. You just put some few things together and get, okay, let me just get submitted so that it will be that I've completed it. And as such, it will reduce your productivity, even increase stress and anxiety because as the deadline draws closer and closer, with unfinished tax, then you just realize that you have you still have lots of things to do. You start panicking, you'll be feeling overwhelmed and the likes. And it leads to poor quality of work because you not give enough time for yourself to really assess what it is you have to put into the job. Then another reason is because as you procrastinate over and over again, even maybe if a colleague or your mentor or your um your boss at work, give, at work gives you a work to do and then you're always like no uh, meeting the deadline it's it tarnishes someone's an uh, image reputation so another thing is it leads to missed opportunities in cases of maybe you are submitting application for something that is quite important and you are just postponing postponing until the last minute even if you get it or you will not do exactly what it is you're supposed to do and at the end of the day, maybe you just left some things out and you'll not be considered for that role or that position or you'll not get into that um, what you applied for. So it is important to all for us to look at um, procrastination. And thank God we've already talked about time management because procrastination and time management, they work hand in hand for you to be able to like look at procrastination or before we even talk about you procrastinating on the time, you should already know how to manage your time effectively. Those things come hand in hand. So now we have the procrastination wheel. So what is the circle of procrastination? How do procrastinators, how do they work? So the first thing is once they are given a tax or you have a job to do, you end up procrastinating it, delaying it to a later time. And then as time goes on, you start feeling guilty of not doing that job. And most times when we procrastinate, it's not as if you just sit down and be looking. There are moments that even when you're procrastinating or maybe you're um, presenting um, presenting a slide or maybe working on your slide or anything, you can be working on any other thing. You can decide to maybe clean the house, start cooking, watching video games, or even just any other tasks. And that's why procrastination is quite different from um, laziness. Because it's not because you don't have the strength to do the tax. You have the strength. In fact, you may not even be sleeping. You can be doing something else. But then you but you know that you're not doing what it is you are supposed to be doing. And that's why it is procrastination. So once you have the tax, then you procrastinate on it and you start feeling guilty about not completing that tax. And as the deadline approaches, you start um you start panicking. You start panicking. And with time, you start. If you are not able to complete the tax, then you have to come up with excuses for not doing it. Most times, you have to even end up lying or just coming up with silly excuses. 
So and like that, like that, the circles continue like that. You procrastinate, you feel guilty, panic sets in, and then you make excuses over and over again. Once you find out you are in this circle, then you know that you are a procrastinator, and you are not just procrastinating, you are a procrastinator. And if you if you find out that okay, you are a procrastinator, then you have to work on it because it has a negative, it has a lot of negative consequences, just like we've talked about before. So, what are some of the factors that lead to procrastination? Now, uh, we when we started, we said a lot of people procrastinate. I procrastinate too, but that does not necessarily make us procrastinator. But before we before I talk about the factors that lead to procrastination, can you just tell me? Maybe you can just look back um, a week or two weeks or any experience or anything you've um, procrastinated on. Why did you procrastinate? So anybody cares to to share why they procrastinated on that task? What are the factors that um, lead to procrastination for you? So let me call names because people may not want to talk. Um, Firom, I would like to share. Is there any task you procrastinated on recently? Uh, let me say something. Okay. I would say social media, let me say you're supposed to maybe to type or do your assignment, then you just pick up your phone, you end up doing something else, watch a video or just anything or view status. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So most times you just like, so that, that's one of the, um, that's one example of procrastination. So what are like the factors that you can think of? that leads to procrastination for you. Why do you procrastinate? Let me put it that way. Can you talk of any reason why you procrastinate? Like, okay, so let me share my own experience. For me, I, uh, okay, we, af okay, after we've gone. Yeah, when we are doing, uh one task if there is a difficult uh, we stop and we will forecast uh, for another day and we will, with that with that will uh, another uh, um, problem to forecasting yeah so one reason as afterwork said is maybe the tax is kind of challenging so instead, mm. you settle for the one that you are like you know very well, something you can do very well. So you, instead of doing the one that is challenging, you go on to do the one that you know is easier for you. For example, if you have an essay to write in school, then mm. uh, like writing, if writing does not come easy to you, and probably you prefer working on your math assignments. But you might have even completed the math assi assignments, but you just decide to work on any other mathematics and exercises because that one is easier for you. And then you postpone the English assignments mm. till the last mm. minute. That is procrastinating, you get. And mm. in that instance, the reason the person procrastinated is because of um, maybe it could be fear of discomfort, fear of failure, something mm. they are not very um, good at. So they are like afraid to put, even to do it. So they set it off till later time. And there's always this, this thing that comes with it for at least for me, is the belief that once there's a deadline, even if I procrastinate, I'll still get it done. But at mm -hmm. what extent? Because at the end of the day, you realize that even at the end of the day, you get it done, but not it will not be as effective as if you had gotten this job started earlier. You get it done, you submit, you, the person can end up submitting the essay, submitting the paper, but you don't really put in enough effort that you're supposed to have put in to it. But what you just know is, hmm, there's a deadline. I'll still do it before the deadline. There's no big deal. So you just continue to procrastinate on it. So yeah, those are some of the factors that lead to procrastination. So let me see what I have here. So the first one here is um, fear of failure. The fear of just, um, fear of failure like we've pointed out before because you are not very very vast in maybe writing so you leave it to a later time maybe it could be making presentation slides maybe you're not very good at it so you leave it to a later time so another thing is perfectionism okay something you're like you're okay you're good at 
but or even you may not even be very good at it but you just want to get the job done perfectly a hundred percent and then you just find out you are waiting till the deadline and this has a very bad um consequence especially when we are submitting applications where there are other people like thousands of people that are applying for that same role or that same job or that same position then you're trying to like perfect yours you end up submitting close to the deadline at that moment they might have even selected the candidates they want so another one is lack of motivation and this one is a really big one so here lack of motivation you just don't even know how to even get started you're not motivated to get the job like you're not even motivated to get started at all so here which is the poor time management skills so um thank god we already talked about time management and i believe um we, are, we know how to manage our time well now at least we are putting in some um we are practicing the time management this thing we talked about methods we talked about so another reason people procrastinate is when they have poor time management skills they don't have schedule for their um, for the things they have to do so they just find out that they are doing the things they are comfortable doing and then the ones that is difficult they will not get it they will not do it all together so another one is overwhelm and indecision and this one always comes in cases where someone is a chronic procrastinator because once you are procrastinating on, if, if you are a chronic procrastinator, it is not just on one task you will be procrastinating, you will be procrastinating on. You will be delaying several tasks such that you now become overwhelmed by everything. The deadlines are approaching. You have to submit your English assignment, your uh, math test is there, your chemistry. I'm just using this one as examples. Like everything is just like coming together and then you just feel overwhelmed. And at the end of the day, you just, oh, then no matter even if I say let me just get started now, I cannot get it done. So I might as well just sleep or just do any other thing you are comfortable doing and not doing what you're supposed to do. So here we have lack of clear goals or direction. That is another factor to that leads to procrastination. And avoidance of discomfort also leads to procrastination. So now, if you've identified the factors that lead to procrastination, the next thing is to look at how we can overcome this thing. Since we've understood the pattern, we know why we are procrastinating on it. So now it's to look at how we can overcome procrastination. So the first thing is to know your why, be realistic and know your why. And this comes in place of um, maybe due to lack of motivation. If you are procrastination, when procrastinating, sorry, because you do not have motivation, you are not motivated to work. So if you understand your why, it will motivate you to get the work started. For example, as you are working, um, you are working on the UTJ challenges, you understand the reason why you even um you enrolled to the program in the first place. You understand what you want to gain from it. And I believe that is what will continue to like motivate you to learn. There'll be moments when you feel the challenges are just too difficult. The tasks are too difficult. But then you will realize that, oh, this is the reason why I enrolled to this course. And that will give you, keep you motivated. So even if the tasks are challenging, you can reach out to people that, okay, I don't understand so, so, and so this puts me through. You get so <clears throat> the on that be realistic and understand your why. Then the second one is apply the five minutes to so this five minutes to what it means is if you want to do a job, just do it and maybe just time yourself that you do just for you. You set that aside just five minutes to do that task. So once you started with just the five minutes, you realize that once you've used and um, spent five minutes on the tax you realize that you just like you'll be more comfortable doing the tax and you spend even more time and before you know it you get the task completed because the most difficult thing in in uh, the most difficult aspect is getting started and if you apply the five minutes to and you just get started just for five minutes you find out that you just do the tax for example for me i find um doing laundry quite like I find it taxing to some extent. So, but I realize that if I should just get started, then it become easier for me. So just apply the five minutes to on the tax you want to do. Then another thing is you set up a reward punishment system. And we've talked about this in time management where you've already made your schedule. So if at the end of the day, 
you get the job done, you reward yourself. And if you do not get the work, uh, the work done, you maybe you have a punishment system, maybe by withholding something you enjoy doing. So that is like a reward punishment system. Then the next one is you should get organized. And all of this is also in the time management that we talked about. So another thing is to ask for help. If what you are doing is difficult or you don't understand it clearly, then you should always ask for help on time so that it will put you through. And asking, you can ask your colleague, your peer, your mentor, you can ask your boss, like just ask for help. Someone that has done something like that before, or even if the person has not yet completed it, someone that has better understanding of it. Then the next one gets rid of guilt because once you start procrastinating on a particular tax, the guilt will start setting in that, oh, I'm not doing the tax. And, and at the end of the day, you may not even complete that tax. So get rid of the guilt and understand that everybody procrastinates. So you should not like beat yourself up because of it. But you should be more concerned about completing the tax. Then become a groupie. We talked about this also in the time management session. Where we said we we'll, now you have your peer and your peers and even you have people that you, maybe you work together. After work, do you want to speak? Okay, I think it's from the previous um listing when we spoke. So become a groupie. Then the next one, manage your time effectively. And we've talked about that. You should set your schedule the previous day. You should block and block your time, the Pomodoro techniques to help you focus. So manage your time effectively and break the habits. And what we mean here is, for example, if you know, like you already believe that, oh, I am I, um, I'm more relaxed in the morning, I get more job done in the morning, and you realize at the end of the day, that money, you may not even do the tax. Instead, you believe that you are more relaxed in the morning. But when the tomorrow morning, is co uh, morning comes, you will not still get the job done. So instead of just doing that, why not break the habit and get the work started this evening instead? So that is like breaking the habit. Then we have the cognitive behavioral solution. But before we move into the cognitive behavioral solution, let's look at the overcoming procrastination that I talked about. Which of these, out of the ones you mentioned, which one do you think you'll be applying moving forward? Which one do you think fits you more? Um, Zainab, are you there? Mm, for my side, okay. I'll I'll have to break the habit, and then I'll also get organized okay, and be realistic point. and know why I supposed to do what I have to do. Okay. So and um, maybe and also manage my time effectively. Yeah, I think those ones work. Those work. Okay. So um, you be realistic and you know your why. You get organized, manage your time effectively, and break the habit. So yes. So now let's talk about the cognitive behavioral solution. Because initially, procrastination was thought to be um, associated with laziness. But as time goes on, we realize that people procrastinate not because, OK, that's OK, Zina. People procrastinate it's not because they are lazy. It's not because of laziness. Because sometimes they may be procrastinating on working on a presentation slide, but instead they are making dishes in the kitchen. They are cooking, spending more time, spending more energy. So it is not about being lazy. It's a cognitive behavior. So now we want to look at the cognitive behavioral solution to procrastination. So the first thing is that we have to change our mindsets. And to do this, like you have to know your why, then you change your mindset. The first step is to understand the thoughts and the belief. You have to understand the factors. What are, why do you procrastinate? The main reason you procrastinate, is it because of failure? Is it because you want to, um, let me say, for example, you want to retaliate? Maybe, uh, maybe your boss gave you too much work to do and you're like, I will never get any of them done. Like, why do you procrastinate? Then once you understood that, the next thing is, you have to rephrase 
um, the way you think. For example, the people that procrastinate, they usually use some of these phrases like, I have to do so, so and so thing. Um, I shouldn't, or I should probably, or all of those phrases just show like they are not certain about them doing the job. And sometimes they, for example, the I have to brings the mindset of you are not really willing to do this tax, but it's just something that you have to do, maybe out of compulsion. So we have to change the mindset. And these are some of the other phrases that we can use. For example, you can say, I will definitely work on my so so and so challenge today or i will start at so so and so clock and continue until so those are some of the phrases that can help um, change our cognitive behavior as to procrastination so yes and edward young said that procrastination is the grave in which your opportunity is buried and i agree with this because if you procrastinate there are a lot of opportunities that will be lost along the way and you only realize that when you see maybe some of your mates that are winning and you are still in one place and so yeah we should break the habits of procrastination then let's look at this scenario and then we'll answer a few questions on it before we move on to the challenge and i think a lot of us can relate to this scenario so Sega had a crucial presentation to prepare for a team meeting the next morning, outlining the quarterly sales projections. Then instead of working on the data analysis and the presentation slides, she found herself scrolling through social media feeds, watching funny cat videos. Those videos are actually very funny. And yeah, and rearranging her decks for the opt-in time. Each, each time she opened her laptop to start the task, she convinced herself that she will work better under pressure later in the evening. Sarah justified her procrastination by telling herself that she had plenty of time left. As the hour slipped by, she found herself increasingly overwhelmed by the deadline and the load of the work of work is still um, of work still ahead. So all of those things are making her um, overwhelmed. And I think a lot of us can relate with this Sarah with me. We can see ourselves in Sarah's shoe when you have something to do and then you are putting it forward. And then at the end of the day, you'll be justifying that your action. Like it's not as if you just put it and acknowledge that you're even if you say you are procrastinating, you will still justify it. Well, I work better maybe in the evening, or um I'll work better when I'm more relaxed, or I'm just gathering, you know, for, there are some cases when maybe you want to work on presentation slide. Instead of getting it started, you start um getting more information about this presentation. And at the end of the day, you find out two hours has gone by, you've never done anything on the slide. So you can still justify like I'm just getting more information. But the truth is you're afraid to just get started. You're afraid to put something down. So yes, so this is Sarah's scenario. So how do you think the presentation, like about Sarah now, like she's putting the work off, how do you think the presentation will turn out to you? Do you think it will be very good or what are your thoughts on that? Anybody? Um, come again with a question. Okay, so I said, how do you think Sarah's presentation, her slides, how do you think it will turn out? It will obviously be not that? going to include what's supposed to include. Yeah. So at the end, because she will like she, she will at the end of the day, if she continues like this, she will be working on the slide very close to deadline, and she will not put in most of the things that are supposed to be there. Then how do you then from your own personal experience, not say as now, how do you justify your own? And procrastination you can just look at the weekend what was one example of the task that you're supposed to do maybe over the weekend or even yesterday that you do not do you put it off till later time and then you justify that what did you use to justify your procrastination uh not to lo uh, doing the work that we get yesterday that we, mm -hmm. we are going to submit tomorrow actually i didn't look into that activity that's that's one yesterday so okay so um, because, of, because yeah. i was hoping moving today to do so okay so you were hoping you do so what were you not doing yesterday sorry 
I say, so what did you do yesterday instead of working on your tax one? I started doing some other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's okay. So I think a lot of us can see ourselves in this Sega's shoe. We can picture ourselves there is something that we all do, but we just have to recognize it and try to be better. So yes, so let's move on to the challenge. But before we go on to the challenge, does anyone have a question on the presentation? Or well, I should move on. Okay, so I guess no one has a question. Thank you, Kiromsa and Zarifai. So yes, let me share this. Okay, can you see my slides? Yep. All right. So let me scroll down. These ones are just introduction. Oh, I've not the table. I think I did that. So procrastination, and this is just definition. And here is a link to an article by Professor Joseph Ferrari, the professor of psychology at the Paul University. You can check it out. And I there's also a video on um procrastination by Tim Orban, but on inside the mind of a procrastinator. It's a really interesting video. You enjoy it. So yes, so let me go on to what is expected to be done for this challenge. So after you've watched the video, the Team Urban's video, so for the number one question, you have to watch the video. So as Tim shared in his story in the TED talk, write your own procrastination story while at Ten Academy too. Make sure it is original and it captures the essence of your own experiences. Make it yours, like tell your own story. Then why sharing us your story emphasize the following. Number one, the name of that specific tax or challenge you procrastinated on. Was it career challenge or the technical challenge or any of the name, specific name of the tax? Then number two, highlight the particular element procrastinated in that tax. So what is it exactly that you are supposed to do there on, in the tax that you do not do that you procrastinated on? Then how did you feel? Why working on it like last minute? So why you decided to procrastinate? How did you feel while working on it the last minute? And were the results positive or negative? So did they turn out well? Were you able to work on it successfully? And were they positive results? Or were you not able to complete it? You did not get the job submitted at all for grading. So the number two question here is that in general, so here, aside from the 10 Academy tax or your experience with 10 Academy, but in general, what are the underlying reasons or triggers for your, for your procrastination? So you should provide a list of four reasons with their detailed explanation. So look at why do you procrastinate as a person, not just at 10 Academy, but in general. Also, it should reflect on the role of distractions in your procrastination. So what five external factors or distractions often, often derail your focus and contribute to procrastination? And also, in general, you should list four excuses or justification you use to rationalize your procrastination behavior to yourself. Just like when we looked at Sarah, we found that like what Sarah does, come in. What Sarah does, how she justified her own is that she works better under pressure. So she sets it off to when the pressure will be on. So you now, you should look at your own, um, what are the excuses that you give to rationalize your procrastination behavior? And you should be honest about the thought pattern or beliefs that enable your procrastination habits. So in general, reflect on past instances of procrastination. We are there any uh, negative consequences or mixed opportunities? So do you miss any opportunities because of your procrastination? Or what are some of the negative consequences you've had? Then think about times when you successfully avoided procrastination. So what strategies did you use when you avoided procrastination? When you were able to overcome procrastination, how did you go about it? So list as many strategies as possible and explain them. 
just talk about the strategies you used. Then one thing you should bear in mind is that the goal of the challenge is not just to complete the task. We are not just saying you should do this so that you get graded. No, but it's for you to gain insights, to understand your own procrastination habits and develop strategies for improvement. So use this opportunity to learn more about yourself and how you can be better at managing your time and also responsibilities. So once you are done with that, you should make it in a, a slide presentation, then convert it to PDF, just as you've been doing for other assignments, then submit it on the 10X. And please, when you are making your submission, always make a, always grant access so that we're able to grade it as, as soon as possible. And the deadline is on Friday, not Saturday. It's on Friday, 8 p.m. So the deadline for this tax is on Friday, 8 p.m. UTC. So yes, yeah, so that is it. Um, any question? Do you have any question? Or should I read the challenge again? Should I go right again? Or you understand what you are expected to do? Yes. Okay. Can you explain? Okay, okay, you understand. Okay. So um I'll share the challenge document. Let me paste it here, but I'll also share it on Slack. It has no access. Hmm? There is no access for that. Yes, I will I'll grant access as soon as possible. Once I'm done now. So let me stop sharing. Let me stop recording.